Hello, and welcome to episode 49 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Painting Series. In this episode, we're going to paint Grand Admiral Thrawn from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Thrawn is quite an interesting figure, both visually as well as in terms of his character. In this video, I'll be aiming for quite a high contrast, vibrant look for the blue skin, and a slightly warm white tone for the uniform. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the figure in black, followed with some grey and white zenithal highlights applied from above. I provided wider coverage of white than usual given the colour of the uniform, and a simple prime in plain white would also be fine. We'll then apply the base colours except for the white uniform, which I'll shade and highlight all in one go in the next step. Next we'll add some highlight and shade, and I'll be imagining an off-centre overhead light source to create a little drama, especially for the face. I will also be building up quite a soft warm white tone for the uniform, starting with the shadow tones and ending with the highlights, and I've chosen to take a non-metallic metal approach for the epaulettes. Our finishing touches will include painting the rank badge, adding a few final touches to the face, and providing a scenic base. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting all of the black areas, using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of black and dark sea blue. For places like the belt, holster and the hair, I quite like the thinness of the paint to allow the raised details to show through. However, I'd like the boot to have a more solid tone, so I'm providing a second layer. For the skin, I'm mixing roughly equal quantities of Vallejo's Prussian Blue and Light Turquoise. Before painting the face, I'm going to paint the eyes, and I've chosen to provide an undercoat of pure white. I've thinned this down enough for it to quite easily flow into the recesses of each eye. Once dry, I'm painting over this with some Evil Sun's Scarlet. I'm not too worried if I cover a wider area than necessary, as we can trim things back with the skin tone in a moment. I'm now painting the rest of the skin, and will be providing a couple of layers to achieve a deep, solid colour. I'm also tidying up some of the hairline along the way. Next I'm painting the epaulettes, using Japanese uniform. I'll be turning my attention to the white uniform in a moment. With that done, we're now ready to add some highlights and shade. I'm going to begin with the skin, so we'll be returning to the Prussian blue and light turquoise. And for the highlights, I'll be mixing in some Uriel yellow and some white, and for the shadows, I'll be adding some Nagaroth night and some black. The white I'm using is Schmincke's Titanium White, but you could use whatever you like. Here I'm mixing my white and yellow. 
and I'm now mixing this into the light turquoise end of the bass tone mix. At the other end, I'm now mixing in my Nagaroth Knight and black. It's not essential to use these exact colours of course, and you could play around with whatever tones you like to create a gradient you're happy with, as long as you achieve adequate contrast. I'm starting the highlights using a slightly light mid-tone. I've chosen to imagine a light source coming from Thrawn's upper left to allow me to create a little more dramatic light and shade. So you'll see me building up the highlights a lot more on the left side of Thrawn's face, and I'll be pushing the shadows on the right. I'm now climbing up the gradient. Notice that the yellow I've added pushes the blue base tone towards green, which is a naturally more luminous colour, helping to make the highlights really stand out. I'm now going to begin defining the shadows on the right side of the face. After drawing in the main shadow beneath the cheekbone, I'm now using a damp brush to thin the tone out as the shadow drops off. Here I'm mixing a little red with the skin highlight tone to produce a slightly more lilac colour for the lower lip. and I'm now continuing to push the highlights. Here I'm lightening the jawline on the right side of the face. Although this is cast in shadow, I can still imagine some light being cast up from the white uniform. And here I'm using some of the blue mid-tones to bridge some of the areas of highlight and shadow. I'm now working with the brightest end of the gradient. And I'm going even darker for the shadow beneath the right cheekbone. I'm also using this to more strongly define the shadows above the eyes. I'm now working round the face making small adjustments here and there. These are my final brightest highlights.
Next I'm going to paint the white uniform. For that I'm going to mainly use Vallejo's Ivory, mixed with some black and a little Nagaroth Knight for the shadows, and brightened with some Schmincke's Titanium White for the brightest highlights. The Titanium White is a heavy body artist's acrylic like those also made by Liquitex and Golden. These whites generally produce a smoother, less chalky finish compared to hobby paints and I think are a worthy investment. Here I'm mixing some black into the ivory, and now a little Nagaroth Knight just to add some tonal interest. I'm now adding my white to the top end of the gradient. I'm starting with the darker tone and I'm using this to block in the main areas of shadow, and then using a damp brush to feather out the edges where necessary. The light and shade provided by the Black Prime and Xenothal highlights are obviously quite useful here, but they aren't essential. Here I'm creating a shadow to the right of the head to strengthen the illusion of my off-center light source. I'm now moving up the gradient and painting on the next lightest areas of the uniform. Here I'm once again using a damp brush to feather out the edge of the transition. I'm now using virtually pure ivory and painting what we could now consider to be the main areas of highlight. I want the brightest area to be the upper chest and shoulders. I'm reserving the actual white mostly for the brightest spots on the right shoulder, collar and upper chest. I'm now using some thinned shadow tone to help define the various seams on the uniform.
I'm now moving on to the epaulettes, and I'm going to first create a highlight tone by mixing some Uriel yellow and some white into the Japanese uniform. I'm then using this to create a couple of bold strips of highlight on each shoulder. I'm then using a somewhat thinned intermediate tone to blur the border between these highlights and the Japanese uniform base tone. If the border is still looking quite visible and sharp, we can add a second layer. I'm now reapplying some of the highlight tone to boost the contrast. Next I'm going to mix in some Nagaroth Knight and some black. And then brushing this into the areas of non highlight in a couple of layers. I'm now using an even brighter highlight tone to add some edge highlights. I'm going even brighter still and also providing a boost to the central highlights. Here I've chosen to add an additional highlight to one side just to break up the symmetry. Finally, I'm going to very lightly glaze on some of the light turquoise, especially for the reflections that are closest to the face. I'm now moving on to the areas of black, where I'm simply adding increasing quantities of white into the black and dark sea blue base tone. You could of course save time here by simply using a gloss varnish instead if you like. I've quite quickly built up to adding a few glinting highlights of pure white for the boots to create a shiny impression. I'm now using the same grayscale to paint the buckle on the belt, starting with some bold highlights in white to establish my light source. And then going in with some more mid and shadow tones. Finally I'm adding a few highlights to the hair, once again pushing the levels to match my imaginary upper left light source.
and I'm now adding a few final highlights to the pistol. With that done, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to use some Prussian blue to paint the blue section of the rank badge. Rather than try to pick out each individual raised segment, I'm simply painting the entire left half with the blue. I'm now mixing some Uriel yellow with Japanese uniform and using this to paint the yellow section of the badge, which should be the upper right three segments. And I'm now using Evil Sun Scarlet to paint the rest. I'm now using some reasonably thinned white to draw in the gaps between the individual segments. Next I'm using a mid-tone grey to paint the pens in the pocket. Which I'm now highlighting with a paler tone. I'm now going to thin some Drukey Eye Violet with three parts of Lamian Medium and use this to tint the hair. And here I've chosen to provide an off-white glint to the left corner of each eye. And I'm now providing a few final highlights for the skin. After providing a matte spray for protection, all that remains now is for me to rebase the miniature as described in the previous episodes. And this completes Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget that you can find full details of the brushes and paints used in the video description along with chapter links and all of the places where I can be found on social media. My very special thanks as always go to my amazing patrons for so kindly funding this series. If you'd like to help fund future content then feel free to click the Patreon link and pledge what you can. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!